School of uh, School of the Prophets, Volume Two. Is Saul among the prophets? First Samuel chapter ten, verses five to seven says, um, "Afterwards, you will come to the hill of God, where there is a fort of the Philistines, and it will happen as you come there to the city, even you will meet a band of prophets going down from the high place, and before them will be a harp, and a tambourine, and a flute, and a lyre." So what does that tell you right there from the, from the get-go? A harp, a tambourine, a flute, and a lyre. Basically, musical instruments. Worshipping. And, yeah, exactly, uh, Blue Cherokee Valley. Uh, and they will be prophesying. Verse, t verse 6. And the Spirit of Jehovah will be prophesying, I'm sorry, will be powerful on you. And you will, be prof and you will prophesy with them. Look at this. And you will be turned into another man. Why? Because of the harp, the tambourine, the flute, and the lyre. Basically, uh, the guitar, the drums, the flute, and the bass. All will be playing together. And you will be turned into another man. Because worship turns you to somebody else. Verse 7. And it will be when these signs come to you, do for yourself what your hands find. For God is with you. Verses 10, I'm sorry, First Samuel 10, verses 9 through 12 says, And it was so that when he had turned his back to go towards Samuel, God gave him another heart. Did you catch that? God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. So if you don't get another heart, guess what? You'll be operating off of a gift and not having intimacy. And the reason why people, it says in the Bible that uh, they'll say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy your name? And Lord goes, depart from me. You know why? Because you were never received another heart. Verse 10. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass, when all, uh, when all that knew him beforehand saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets, then the people said to one another, What is this that comes from the son of Kish? Is Sal among the prophets? And one of the same, I'm sorry, and one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, is Sal among the prophets? Now, just just the caveat, like I said earlier, just because you can prophesy prophesy doesn't mean you're a prophet. I'm gonna say it again. Just because you can prophesy does not mean you're a prophet. I want you to scream. I hit that. I hit that too fast. The mashal, which means that's the uh, uh, means proverb uh, in in Hebrew. The mashal. This is a part that a lot of people they kind of mull over. We're, we're going to get into this real quick. First Samuel eighteen, chapter six. I'm sorry, chapter eighteen, verse six to ten. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the spot of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. What are they doing? They are worshiping. And the women answered one another as they played. Say that with me again. And the women answered one another as they played. The women answered one another as they prayed, and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David sent thousands. You know what they're doing? There was a prophetic utterance was going back and forth. Saul has killed his thousands, David is ten thousand, and they were answering the prophetic utterance that was going going forth. And Saul was uh, verse eight, verse eight. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, "They have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they only ascribed only but thousands. Uh, what can he have more but the kingdom?" And Saul eyed David from that day forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand at, as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So, quick question. I'm sorry, wait, before that. Let's go back to verse 10. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So now, Quick question. Who was prophesying? It's okay. You can, you can talk. So. And it came to pass on the morrow. Yeah. 
that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house. It was Saul who was prophesying, not David. So many people think it was David who was prophesying. No, it was Saul who was prophesying. Saul. Now, here's the mystery of Revelation. In 1 Samuel chapter 19, this is really interesting. Uh, just to kind of set the, set the scenario, David, uh, Saul wants to kill David. So David is married to Saul's daughter, Michael. So Michael's trying to save his, save his life. So basically she hides him and then, you know, says, you know, has, has David go out the window. So David finds out, I'm sorry, Saul finds out and wants to try to kill David. And, uh, but he's already taken off. So um, we see at this point, he was hiding inside the house, jumped out of the window and fled. Saul sends people after David. We pick it up at verse 19. So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he said, I'm sorry, and he went, he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is in Naoth and Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. But they were not turned into a different man. Good afternoon, everybody. And it was told to Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again a third time, and they also prophesied among them. So in other words, every time you come around prophets, you're going to prophesy. <laughs> but you're not turned into a different man. Because you have a gift, and you can operate a gift, does not mean you stand in the office. There's a difference. The, Saul sent three, three uh, different times uh, groups of messengers to are basically guards. He sent the marshals after uh, David. And every time they came around Saul, Saul, uh, Saul, they all started prophesying. But this gets interesting. Verse 22. Then went he also to Ramah and came to a great well that is in Saku. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, there are Naoth and Ramah. And this, now this is Saul now. And he went thither to Naoth and Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied, uh, again, we're talking about Saul, until he came to Naoth and Ramah. Verse 24. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and laid down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore, they say, is Saul among the prophets? Not that was he a prophet, but was he also with the prophets, with Samuel? So the Proverbs, the Mashal, wasn't, oh, is Saul a prophet too? No, the proverb came from, wow. Samuel's in the house of the prophets, prophesying, butt naked? Is he with them? Not is he among them? There's a difference. Just because people say, oh, I'm a prophet because I'm among the prophets. No, 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 no. If you, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, the Proverbs we read in the 18th chapter says, uh, oh, it's a mashal, it's a proverb. Is Saul amongst the prophets? Is Saul amongst the prophets? But it came and originated from verse 19 when this dude went there and he's crazy. He's lost his mind and he's sitting there butt naked, rambling about stuff. He was inside with the prophet. So he go, oh, hey, where's that? Oh, he's with the prophet. So basically among the prophet. So is Saul with the prophets? Not is Saul a prophet? Is he among them? Is he with them? Not, oh, so he's a king and a prophet? No, that's not what it means. It means, oh, he's with them? <laughs> He's in the same house? Yeah. Uh, if I go to Hawaii and I put on a lay, don't make me Hawaiian. I'm sorry. As much as I like BMWs, if I go in a car, uh, if I go in a garage, I'm not going to be a BMW. Good afternoon, everybody. But, but it does not negate the fact that you can prophesy. But just because of the fact I hop in a garage does not make me a car. That's what they're saying. Oh, so is I in a garage? Not, oh, a Sal BMW? There's a, there's a difference. The Mashal, the proverb. Numbers, chapter 11, verse 25. This is something you don't hear a lot about a whole lot. 
Verse 25. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it to 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Moses. This is saying that the Lord came down and took the spirit that was on Moses and divided it amongst among 70 other people. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. They were not prophets. They were able to prophesy. But there, verse 26, but there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of one was El Eldad and the name of the second one was Medad. And the spirit rested upon them and they were one. I'm sorry, and they were of them that were written, but went not out of the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there was a young man, and told Moses, saying, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the son of the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said, to, uh, uh, said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And, and Moses uh, went back into the camp and he and the elders of, of, uh, of uh, the elders of Israel. Yeah, basically they were saying, oh, hey, 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 you, you can't prophesy. You don't belong to the, my, my church. You don't belong to my ministry. And, and, and uh, uh, Moses tell uh, Joshua, wait, are you, are you jealous of them because on my behalf? Don't be jealous. Oh, that God would make everybody prophets. And he calls everybody to be prophets. You know why? We're going to look into the reason why uh, Moses said that. But it, uh, real quick, if you notice that the same thing happened to Jesus. The Bible says that uh, God took the spirit that was on Moses and gave it to 70 people. Same thing happened with Jesus. He told his disciples to go into all the world. And they went out and then <laughs> he told 70 unknown people. Go and do the same thing. And they came back talking about, wow, demons are subject to us. People are getting healed. People are getting delivered and set free. Isn't it interesting that these seven year are unknown, unheard of people, but the 12 who was originally with Jesus was like, oh, aren't we the chosen? Chosen? Aren't we the, the elite? Aren't we the, you know, I'm posing like I'm chosen. And you're going to give to somebody unknown who wasn't with you? You know why? The Spirit of God rests upon them. It doesn't matter who you are. If the Spirit of God is resting upon you, then you can flow in the gifts of the Spirit. He gave uh, uh, in uh, Numbers, God took the Spirit that was upon Moses and gave it to 70 elders of the church. And they all prophesied. I love it. They ceased not. Then when they went out to the people, Two people who hung out, hung out, stayed back. Eldad and Medad. They too stayed back. That's interesting. Let's go look into these guys. You don't hear about Eldad and Medad too much, do you? Mm -hmm. No, sirree. Eldad and Medad, the original OGs. <laughs> Eldad, his name in Strong Concordance is H419. It means God has loved. It's a combination of breaking of two words. L, which means God. Um, you're right. And D, which means judgment or justice. Me, Dad, is from age 4312. It's loving and affectionate. Uh, the second half of the word is to handle with care, loving. So basically, God put upon two dudes named God who, who brings justice, who handles with care, affectionate. If you are not prophesying with care, bringing justice in a loving manner, you are not Eldad and Medad. You are operating in a gift, but are not in intimacy. God wants us all to prophesy, to display God's love. Not to be a parlor trick to guess the color of the animal you have behind your back. The ministry, the office of the prophet is to edify, to equip, to build up the body of Christ. Not to sit there and say what year you were born and what year you're going to get your beamer. That's not the, that, those are parlor tricks. That's not the, that's not what God has called the offices to do. But it's been used as such for people to gain quote unquote notoriety or or or, or um uh popularity, whatever you want to call it, to, to kind of be up there and ooh, 
Now, I've heard some, I'll, I'll just give you the list of the, some of the words I've heard. On actual business cards, mind you. Actual business cards. Chief Super Apostle. Master Chief Prophet. Second Jesus. I kid you not. Second Jesus. Super uh, Captain uh, uh, Prophet of the Prophetic. Uh, and the classic one was a supreme prophet. Uh, now, all these words are saying they're trying to make themselves seem much more higher than better than the other when it's that, that's so antichrist. The Bible says you must decrease so he must increase. Uh, esteem others higher than yourself. If you got to put supreme second Jesus chief apostle on your business card, I won't even acknowledge you. I just won't. I just, I can't. Because I know you're trying to up one other on somebody else. And, and don't tell me your exploits. You should see, sometimes we'll go to a church or some ministry, and I'll, I'll meet somebody, and I'll go like this. Yeah, yeah, one time, yeah, I told this one guy that he was going to get married, and yeah, he got married. Yeah, so what they're trying to do, they're trying to validate that gift to say, oh, from prophet to prophet, we're, we're prophets, right? Because I told you that one time, I did that one thing. Yeah, I won't even acknowledge you. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't. I cannot. I can't, because you're trying to tell me. You're trying to give me your res resume without me actually seeing uh, your ethics. The Bible says, know those that labor among you. Now, there are some people who I, who today, I'm not going to name any names. I don't consider them prophets. Yeah, they have a gift and maybe they made some money off of it. Maybe they got a little bit of popularity or, or celebrity status, or whatever. Oh, okay, well, fine. May the Lord bless them. But it's the people that they minister to. I like to go back 10 years, uh, from 10 years ago and find out, hey, that word that they gave you didn't come to pass. That's pretty much it. That's it. And if so, okay. Then I look at that person. Would that person stand before Jesus if, the, if, they, if they stand there and Jesus says, depart from me, you work of iniquity, I know that all they were doing for the past 10 years was playing church. And that's a problem. You know why? Because the chief super apostle, Grand Poopa, didn't operate in community. Prophets operate in community, not just one up one one upism. There's no higher elite. There's no super apostle. Da, 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 da. There, there, there's such, such a creature does not exist. We all work in community. That's what the Bible says when someone prophesies the two or three judge. Um, prophesy one at a time, the two or three judge. And then therefore you can say, okay, is that from God? No, no, okay, no. Next. And it's not to say they're going to shame somebody because in times past, when a word didn't come to pass, they would stone you. You know why they would stone you? Because they put so much trust and faith to know that you were saying, thus saith the Lord, they're going to yield and obey whatever that comes out of your mouth. If you say, go and attack the Philistines and all of a sudden everybody dies, no, that wasn't from God. Yeah, you pretty much, you know, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. That's just, I'm not knocking people who have been stoned, but you just can't say that. Or, or the classic one is when <laughs> they'll, they'll say something after the fact. If I hear one other person, there'll be an earthquake in LA. And it'll be something like whatever, 6.3, whatever. The next day, I kid you not, I will have four or five people saying, oh, you know, God gave me a dream about there being an earthquake in LA. Yeah, but you didn't say anything? You didn't warn people? You didn't, you didn't say anything? You, you said, well, you know, I just want to make sure that if it didn't come to pass, I don't, I don't want to be embarrassed. Then it's not from God. If you're going to sit there and tell people after the fact as confirmation, that's not confirmation. That's like me saying, I predict that the LA Rams will win the Super Bowl. After the game is over? Seriously? I digress. My point being, hey man, Jermaine, Jesus does not have a title. That's so true. Okay. Oh, th thank you for saying that, Jermaine. You, you, you remind me of something. Um, Jesus told the disciples, let no one call you rabbi. Now, the reason why he told his disciples that, because Jesus went to rabbi school. I don't know if you guys know that. Jesus literally went to rabbi school. He graduated from rabbi school. He walked out of that out of rabbi school as a rabbi. You can't be called a rabbi unless you go to rabbi school. He went to rabbi school, came out at age 30. He had smika. He was a rabbi. But his disciples never attended rabbi school, which is why he says, don't let anyone call you rabbi. You know why? They didn't go to rabbi school. If I'm a doctor and I train some people how to do an operation, I will tell them, don't let nobody call you a doctor because you're not. You didn't go to school. You didn't pay the price. You weren't there from the beginning. So, no, don't let nobody call you that. But he wasn't saying this as if to say you're not operating in, you know, in, in an office.
because you were intimate with me, you're close with me. They will see you. Don't let them call you rabbi, but they will call you apostle. They will call you prophet. They will call you evangelist. That is a title, but Jesus himself never had a title. But here's the beauty of all that, and I will say this before we start getting into the ministry. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. The apostle is the one that goes head to head with the principality of that region. The prophet is the one that reveals the hidden things of the hidden works of darkness, the hidden secrets, or, or the treasure that was hidden. He's the revealer. The evangelist is the one that wins souls. The pastor is the one that the, after the souls are won, the pastor is the one who helps take care of them, nurture them. And the teacher explains everything that went on to help get ready for the next generation. That's how they operate. So we see in Jesus, the Bible said he gave these gifts to men. So you were at, if you were to ask, when did Jesus give these gifts to men? It happened at the time, the last few days of Jesus' ministry. Because he was before Pontius Pilate. He was before Herod. You know who they were? They were the leaders of the principalities of the region. So he goes head to head. And he goes, by whose authority are you here? He uttered not a word, and the apostles released. They had him, the, the Roman soldiers put him in the back. They began to uh, put a, 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 a thing over his head, and they began to pull his beard out and punch him. And they say, hey, prophet, like, who punched you? He said not a word. And then the prophet is released. As he's on the cross, he heard these words. He saved others, but can he save himself? He uttered not a word, but the evangelist is released. Someone said, teacher, teacher, when will the day come? He uttered not a word, and the teacher is released. And the, the best part, the peace that brings his thoughts, is when the thief right next to him said, remember me when you get to paradise. And spoken like no other than a true pastor says, today you will be with me in paradise. All five of the offices were released at the time of his death. So the gifts were released on the cross. I want to share something with you guys. We're talking about uh, that place of flowing. Did you know that even when David, when he wrote the Psalms, he didn't have, uh, what's that called, um, garage band. He didn't have any software. He didn't have any notes to take. There was no paper that existed. So all the Psalms that David sings are prophetic songs that came out of the Spirit. By the way, Miriam, when she had her her, her, her worship team, came up with tambourines, something about music that causes you to prophesy. They were just banging the, the tambourines, and all of a sudden, boom, they begin to prophesy. They begin to prophesy the victory. So even in your worship, you can't prophesy your victory. Amen, Monique. I love that. So I want to play something with you because we went to a church. And all, in fact, even it was at that time in the Zuzu Street. There was a church there who I felt they were so anointed, and all they're doing, I've seen dancers, and I've, I'm, I'm talking about 1988 dancers, musicians, and I watched this church. I seen this old guy. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to be an ageist, but I mean, she was senior, a senior senior person, well up in age, leaping and dancing. I looked at this man like, ah, and I felt so bad because he was moving around more than I was. He was jumping and leaping like I'm sitting there going like, how? Yeah, so you'd be sitting down somewhere with a blanket over you going, it's cold, it's cold. Yeah. Now this brother's up there dancing. I'm sitting there going like, how are you doing this? Come to find out that we found out afterwards uh, he had he uh, was in charge of a uh, a ministry called, well, it's called Living Waters of the Ministry, but he had a thing over here called the Institute of Worship. So I went there to the Institute of Worship. They had a worship night, and I went there, and I never seen Oh, pageantry like I saw. And it was just such a beautiful, I mean, the pageantry. They had a uh, Ark of the Covenant where six people were holding down, six pastors in Pasadena. They were walking with a, a makeshift Ark of the Covenant. And that thing was just, I mean, you just, you start trembling when the thing walked past you. And there were girls with their, you know, leaping and dancing and twirling and the musicians were playing. And I'm like, what is this? And my mind could not grasp because I'm used to the whole, oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever. I mean, they're like one, two, one, two, back, you know, 70 songs. But I'm watching this pageantry take place. And I'm like, ah! 
And it was just so beautiful. I just wanted to sit there screaming and crying because I never felt God's presence like that. Like that. It was just so powerful. And I told Pamela, we're going to this church because, my God, if this is a worship night, I can imagine what Sunday was. Yes, Sunday was no different. Now, I have been in, uh, involved with the prophetic early on in my life. You know, I got saved in 1987. But this is something, you know, a couple years later, when I'm starting to see a church, a company of prophets in the church, where there was a worship song, and all of a sudden, someone grabs the mic, and thus said the Lord, and they began to sing the song of the Lord. I'm sitting there going like, and they were rhyming. I thought like, how are you rhyming? How, how are you doing that? And I just sat there with an amazement, just going, ah, I've never seen that before. So yeah, um, we lived in Lake Forest. Pamela, how, how long did it take us to get to church? Three hours? <laughs> Every week. Hey. Three hours was only that one time when it was raining. But oh, no, 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 it was about an hour to go to church. Yeah, about an hour. Yeah. An hour. One one direction. Yes. So we had to get up two hours before church to make it there to make it there on time. But by the time we made it there, I, I promise you, man, we, we, we went home refreshed, restored, revived. I mean, it was just absolutely beautiful. Now, well, we're talking about three hours because weeknights, they had a weeknight thing going on uh, because of traffic. You know, uh, I need to tell some of you guys. Traffic in LA is crazy, so from Orange County to Pasadena it took three hours. So we would have to leave at four o'clock just to make it there by seven. So by the time the kids got to the school, we picked them up and we we're straight ahead to church. We got there exactly at seven, and that was that it was daunting, but that's where we were. That's where we were. But it was just so beautiful because what I learned from that man about the prophetic and about how worship ties into that, it changed my life. It literally changed my life. I have not been the same since. Now, of course, you know, we after we got you know ordained, we moved on, but I'll never forget that church was my God. They have such a um a special place in my heart. And I just want to play one of the songs that Pastor did. And then we're 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 gonna get, get into um uh each other, pray for each other right now. This is all spontaneous. That's my old pastor. That's, That's my old pastor. And the flute player, she just joined in.
You feel the spirit rising up? God wants us all to prophesy, to display God's love. I promise you, after that, that little spontaneous song, there was like 10, 15 people prophesying. And it was all working together, all working in, in uh, 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 unison, unity. It was just, it was so beautiful. Now, that, just, that one just one time, that one day, that one thing happened. That happens every week. I'm sitting there going like this really, and I was just like, Ah, uh, you know, for us, when someone had a prophetic song of the Lord or a word of the Lord, we thought it was a treat. These people roll like, oh, it's just Sunday. And I'm just sitting there like, ah, 
So every week we were engaged in that type of spontaneous songs. Obviously, they were different at times, but I loved it. I loved it so much. And for like the five years, that's all we got. That's all we did, which is why worship is just absolutely something. It's, it's part of my DNA. It's part of my life. And one of the things I loved about that is when, when the prophecy came forth, we all piggybacked upon that prophecy. In other words, it wasn't about somebody started out by saying, uh, the sun, the sun, the sun, the sky. And someone goes, the ocean. You know what I mean? Or, or you know, pickles. It was all tied together in unison. So we're going to flow like that right now. Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Okay. I do notice that um, there are uh, some places. Well, you know what? Actually, you know what? Because of the fact that um, we've got Fayo and Martin uh, here, I just, I'll, I'll, <laughs> um, I, want, I want to pray with them. Now, most of you guys know, I know, don't get me wrong, Blue Cherokee and Grape Jeep and uh, uh, Gray 182, um, we're going we're gonna to get to you. But for Fayo and uh, Martin, uh, if you guys don't mind, we want to pray over you because you guys weren't there, as far as I know, um, on on Wednesday. Um, that being said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Wow, this is awesome. Some of you could kind of feel that tingling right now. <laughs> God's about to unite us, and we're going to hook up together. We're going to hook up together. Now, um, Let's start with you, Fio. Or let's go. Let's start with you first, um, Fio. Close your eyes, everybody. Peer to me, Holy Spirit. Show me a picture, a vision, an impression, a word, a scripture, a feeling, or Fio. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And you can go ahead and unmute yourself and just let it rip. See, I see a round table. It's a whole bunch of people sitting around this round table. And it seemed like everyone has in on this project. Um, I'm not sure if you're leading this project, but... Um, I, I see it happening. I don't know if it's something that's supposed to um, come to pass, but I definitely see that happening. And you are lead. You actually are the lead. But um, I think it's beautiful how everyone gets to put their hand in it and um, to make it uh, work. Hey Amen. Somebody else flow at that. Jermaine says, rejoice in the Lord always. You are entering a season of rejoicing. Somebody else, keep flowing. Stay, stay, in, stay in the community. I have one. Here. Okay, I saw Theo walking through the desert. And when most people think um, when they're given a glass, that that glass is going to be filled with sand because that's all you see for miles and miles was just sand. But the Lord is going to miraculously provide water in, even in the midst of the desert. So have your glass ready. Be prepared because God's going to continue to supply your need. And you are no longer going to thirst in the wilderness, in the desert. Um, God is going to quench that thirst and he's going to take care of you. Christina says, big party celebration. Monique says, I see waves overtake you by living waters, a, pre a profound refreshing. I see file dancing. God is going to cause you to rejoice. Amen. So, we're gonna do we're gonna do Martina in a second, but just listen to this, listen to what just took place. Rejoice, you're entering into a season of rejoicing. Dancing, someone sees dancing, rejoicing, uh, big party celebration, 
waves overtake by living waters, profound refreshing. Uh, and Pamela, what did you say? The uh, what you thought it was supposed to be sand, but it's going to be water. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Monique says, "I see waves overtake you by living waters, profound refreshing. See it all. It's all tying together. It's all tying together." Bio, are they right on? Yes, they are very right on. Amen. Wow. Amen. I, says, I see God place you on the mountain. Ooh, come on. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Do you know anybody? Let's do more team. So, Father, would you show us a word, a scripture, a verse, an impression? A feeling, a sensation about Martini? Thank you, Father. Okay, I guess I'll go first. <laughs> um, okay, my, I was feeling like a great sadness, like a sorrowful feeling. And then I was starting to see a picture of tears falling from your face. And the Lord showed me that tears only last for a night. Joy comes in the morning. So as I see, I'm beginning to see joy just starting to embrace you not you embracing joy but joy is embracing you and it it's to comfort you it's to bring um healing and uh what were many tears are now just going to be a few and then slowly but surely there is going to be so much joy so much joy um and it's just going to it's going to be like a refreshing well coming at you that's what I saw. It says you are working. I'm sorry. You're wondering if you should proceed with what you are hearing. And God says you are hearing him and he's with you. Blue uh, Cherokee Valley says, I saw a shovel. God is removing the pain, healing the ground so that you will feel his love for you. Monique says, I see latter rain. The latter rain will be greater. Those who sow in tears will reap in great joy. Um, I saw a, uh, I saw a person uh, covered with like a cloak, uh, and I heard the word um, unveiling, and under the cloak was like a big bright light, um, and um, I just heard the word unveiling. So I believe maybe God is something that's going to be uh, unveiled in the next season to come or so, et cetera. I also hear the word uh, boxed in. I don't know if you went through a season where you felt like you were boxed in, um, but you're coming out of that box if that bears witness with you. That's what I hear. Uh, amen. And it says oversized book with pages that need to be filled. Wow. John says, I hear, I heard you are, I heard you are my called, my chosen one. Beautiful. Great Chief Third says, uh, uh, you want to prepare, but not in a good mood? That you want to, you, that uh, you wanted to, oh, you're saddened, okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, you're sad, but not in a good mood.
So a great Jeep third. Um, turn that into a prayer. You want to prepare and start some things, but you're but you're sad. Or sat in rather. Prayer for Martin, Alima. Martin, any of that make sense? Yes, all of it makes sense. Um, everything that was said, it's very relatable. Um, yeah, thank you all. God bless you all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, so pretty much what you guys said, um, I, I prayed over these two yesterday. So it kind of like uh, uh, confirms also some of the stuff that I said that you guys are saying in a different way. So I, I love it. I love it. You know, I, I have more fun than you guys realize. This this is so cool. I dig this. Okay. So, uh, and now, Fayo and, and Martin, now you guys get to participate now as we begin to pray for everybody else. So, for a Blue Cherokee Valley, let's pray for Blue Cherokee Valley. So, Father, we ask, Lord God, would you give us a word, a scripture, a verse, Lord, um, a vision, a picture, an importation, God, a sensation, a feeling. For Blue Cherokee Valley. The fire martini, whatever you feel, uh, whatever the Lord shows you. Uh, Great Jeep third says reveal. He says release. Wow. Reveal and release. It says your praise is your weapon. Wow. Uh, I see a vision of someone having their hands to something, and then they release their hands up. And once they release their hands up, um, movements start happening. So I believe that uh, God is just telling you to uh, take your hands off of it and let God um, uh, work it out. Just believe and stand on faith. I actually saw the same thing and a song came to mind that says, with a heart of thanksgiving, I, I will praise you, O Lord, and it's like your hands are lifted up. Ha! See, now we're hooking up. We're hooking up now. We're hearing the spirit from the Lord. Restoration, Pamela says, restoration, finances, marriage, and family, your miracle is already on its way. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I was going to say, I was like a piece of candy, not Christmas candy. Just I guess it was just a piece of, like, a treat. And it was wrapped up and you begin to pull on the sides and begin to unravel to get the sweetest from it within. Jesus. Uh, Martin says, I see a large tree and I saw the word genealogy. It's as if you were the keeper of the tree. Wow. I see hands outstretched to embrace a hug from God. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's do a great, I'm sorry, great Jeep third. So, Father, we pray for great, I keep saying great, great Jeep third. Father, would you give us a word? Show us a picture, a scripture, a verse, an impression, a feeling, a sensation, Lord, for great Jeep third.
<laughs> now that I said grape, <laughs> that's makes more sense. I saw that you've been in a wine press where you take the grapes off the off the vine, you put them on the wine press. You, you were being pressed and crushed as if to say it's over, but not so because the new wine, the new wine, the old wine is being done away with. The new wine is being poured out, and the price that you have paid to be crushed, the price you paid to be turned and just. Uh, mashed together all that pressure is releasing the spirit of God the oil I'm sorry the wine uh, is the spirit of God and that I see a newness of the spirit of God coming upon you um, and it's not just you know the old fruits of, of the past it's the new wine of the future but Jesus says I hear I heard get your house in order as if there's a new season approaching John says uh, walk with confidence your God is with you. Wow. Your man says your labor of love has not been in vain. Come on. I literally see the words joyous season. Thank you, Lord. Blueberry Cherokee Valley says, I see the person playing an accordion. God says, I see a massive tree with vibrant green leaves. Wow. Christine says, I see a wine room of storage, and all the wines are of great uh, are of uh, are of a great price. Uh, grape cheek third, is that making sense? Yes, it does. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's awesome. Amen. Okay, uh, green belt. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, green belt, let's pray for green belt. Father, would you show us, Lord, a picture, a scripture, a verse, Lord, a sensation, a feeling, God, a vision, an impression for green belt. Thank you, Lord. If you need to pray in tongues or stay in a place of worship, do whatever you need to do to find that, to be able to hear, to fine tune those words or those pictures you're getting and feeling and the sensations you're getting and feeling. I heard. Psalm, oh, go ahead, Andre. No, I'm no, sorry. Go ahead. I heard Psalms 23 for Green Belt. Uh, Blue Cherokee Valley says. Financial. Alima, pull. Try to pull from that a little bit, like a. Like financial breakthrough, yeah, resistance, whatever. Find out what more connects to that. ATL, doing, yeah, you guys are doing really good though. Uh, this one is from John A. I heard comfort in your home, no more mental attacks. Oh, amen. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy says, uh, Jermaine. your peace, Jermaine, sorry, your peace has been tested. Wow, wow.
Notice how certain words uh, hit differently. Hey, Gray Jeep Third says I see a gavel, but it's giving me mantle near a waterfall. Wow. Uh, Christina says God wants to increase you, but in a way that's not going to be normal. Oh, ah, Jesus! Sadrata! I gotta hit all that. I see eagle with mount up wings. You will soar an unusual gifting in the prophetic from Monique. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I keep seeing Chronicle of Narnia, LOL. I believe it may mean you may experience a level of supernatural encounters that others around you may not see from Martine, uh, from Alima Financial Breakthrough. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. That was a good, thank you, Alima, for coming back with that. That's awesome. So proud of you guys, man. Uh, Green Bell, is this making sense? Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Hey, great 182. Feel free to skip me. <laughs> huh? Feel free to skip skip over me. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought we were doing. <laughs> no other ones. That's okay. All right. Uh, John A. Father, we just pray for John A. Lord, would you show us? A picture, a vision, a word, a scripture, a verse, an impression, a feeling, a sensation for John. Father, would you bless John this hour, Father? Thank you, Lord. Andre, your eyes were closed, but Kevin asked, may I share something for Fayo? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Uh, Kevin. Does, does the character Esther in the Bible, does that have any meaning for you like you are something for your family um like you're gonna do something or, or bring your family out and be like almost like a savior to your family does that mean anything to you yes it does, it does. <laughs> so kevin turn that into a prayer father we just thank you Today, we bless you, we give you honor and glory, and I thank you for Fio, Lord. I thank you for the mantle uh, of Esther that is upon her. I thank you for the grace uh, that is upon her to um, bring restoration to her family, to bring healing to her family, to bring uh, truth into her family, Father. I thank you for uh, things that need to be revealed, things that need to be uh, um, shown, hidden agendas, things that um, are the antithesis of your will for her family, Father. Father, give her grace, let her be, uh, let her be the one who is able to step up and speak and reveal and bring truth and salvation use use her to bring truth and salvation to her family in jesus name uh, brody continue that brody i'm seeing things that i can't make out i have no clue what these images are i'm no, stay stay on, on Kevin's prayer and piggyback on that. Like, just pray over Fayo. Like, just whatever comes to you, just pray over her. Continue what, but continue what from what Kevin was saying. Father, we lift up your daughter to you, O oh God. 
And we ask you, Lord, to just bring her into alignment as it is written, Lord, in your word, according to Psalms 139, Father God, that you have written every moment of our lives in your book before any of our days ever came to pass. So, Lord, we ask you to bring her into alignment, Father God. Bring her into alignment, Lord, with what you've written in the scrolls of heaven over her, Lord. We ask you to release the mantle, release the crown, Lord God, release the scepter, Lord, and just bring her into full completion, Lord, of what you have ordained over her life, oh God. Re allow her to, re to receive, Lord God, yes. the fullness, Lord, the fullness, Lord, of what you have placed into her before, Lord God, the foundation of the world. And we thank you for her life, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you will prosper her and you will move her in great and mighty ways, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Sean, continue. Yeah. Sean, that piggyback. was awesome, Brody. Sorry, Sean, go ahead, Andre. Sean, piggyback off that. God, so we thank you. We thank you for aligning the words, Father God. We thank you, Lord, Father God, that they manifest, Father God, amongst our life in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Father God, that there's no, Father God, voice, no weapon, nothing that may stop, Father God, these prayers from going forth, Father God. We thank you that they manifest with boldness, Father God, in this hour, in this season, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that this shall be so in Jesus' name, Father God, aligning financially, spiritually, mentally, physically, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, Father God, that you paving the way for her and for the God for, of the people that she come in contact with, her family, in the name of Jesus, Father God, and in the generation to come, Lord, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you know, Father God, the thing, Father God, the very end of before it happens. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we bless you for it, God. We bless you for it being so in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Bless you. Blue Cherokee, continue and finish it. We thank you for her life in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we lift her up before you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord God, as just as Esther had influence, O oh, Heavenly Father, with the King. We thank you, Almighty God, that she has influence, O oh, Heavenly Father, with you. We thank you that, Lord God, wherever she, um, her Feet, um, our feet trod, Lord God, as she possessed the land. We thank you, O oh God, that in the face of any enemy and any adversity, O oh Heavenly Father, that she has confidence that you have gone before her, that Lord God, you have paved the way. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that Lord God, as our prayers come up before you, O oh Heavenly Father, on behalf of her family, as she stands, she stands just as Esther stood, knowing, Heavenly Father, that she would see the salvation of the Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for her purpose, her plan, and her destiny. We thank you, O oh God, that her days are already written in the name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh Oh God, for the confidence to keep on pushing. Lord God, that she is firm. She's on a firm foundation, knowing, Lord God, that you are live with her. You will never leave nor forsake her. We thank you, Lord God, for the confidence that you're building up in her, Lord God. We thank you, oh God, for the tenacity to stand. We thank you, oh God, for the boldness. We thank you for the confidence, oh God, knowing, Heavenly Father, that, Lord God, because she's put her hope and her trust in you, Almighty God, that, Heavenly Father, shame is not her portion. We thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Amen. So I pulled on you guys because you notice how we were flowing and everything connected together. And you don't even know, but some of you guys were prophesying even in your prayer to her. And what I did was I focused on the men, not that I was favoring, just saying I focused on the men because Esther, as Kevin said, it was Esther who was dealing with not only Mordecai, but also the King Haman, whatever. I'm sorry, Haman and also the, the king and also her uncle. So it was those three men that were overseeing uh, what was going on in the situation. So when we talk about Queen Esther, you can't deny the fact that her uncle um, and that uh, the bride, or the dude, the, uh, the king, I forgot his name now, they were all part of it. So that's why I always did that. So I was pulling up on that, not to say I was going to put you in the spot. Yeah, I put you in the spot, but my point being, I want to pull on that so you can continue on the thread of what's happening because when you get into, when you hook up in the spirit, everything will begin to flow. Everything will begin to make, to, to uh, unify, solidify. Okay. Um Andre, when 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 Bradley uh said something, he said something about a scepter when when he said that that um it what what came to me as soon as he said that there was an there's an for for fail not to fear that there whatever it is that God is gonna have her to do, that uh a, there is favor and authority uh 
favor upon her and authority in her hand to do whatever she's got to do. Yes. Yes. And it is basically it came from a place. As you begin to pray, your prophecy will come through your prayers. You know why? Because of Eldad and Medad. You'll get that in the morning. White Gladwick. We're praying for White Gladwick. Father, would you show us a picture, an impression, a word, a scripture, a verse, a, a feeling, a sensation for White Gladwick? Thank you, Lord. Father, I thought John was next. You skipped John. I'm sorry? I, I didn't hear it. I think we were on John before you went to. Um... Oh, was it was around John? Yeah, I think we were on John because then you went back. Because I had a word for John right when you said John. Oh, okay. So, yeah, sorry, because you're, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, John. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go back to, I'm sorry. And I put a word for him in the chat. Okay. Jermaine says, for John, you have often felt overlooked, but the truth is that you were in the secret place and walking in Psalms 91, blessing, Psalms 91 blessing, and God sees you and he's pleased with you. John, no weapon formed against you will prosper. The Lord declares that you are an overcomer. From, <laughs> from John A to everyone. Wow, amen. <laughs> amen. John, it's like, it's amazing because um, uh, reading about David and about Micah, but it's hard not to think about Jonathan, which basically means uh, Jehovah's gift. Uh, man, my brother, you are a gift to God. You are God's gift. And what, what I mean by that is that, like I said, when Jesus was on the cross, he released those five offices in, in the midst of the, the worst uh, assault, beatings, uh, 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 the, the punishment, everything that was upon him, it released the goodness of the Lord. And you have paid a price. You have paid a price for what God is going to do in you, for you, and then for you through you it is in that that the gift that you have is yourself all the talents all the abilities all the skills that god has already put inside of you have not been realized with full fullest potential but that day of potential is coming it's coming soon so get ready the not only will um there's a, a there's a little expression that says to your level and the ability of solve problems will be the level of your compensation in other words the more problems you solve, the more money you're going to make. And my brother, you're going to solve many, many problems. You're going to solve a whole lot. And God is going to bless you because you have been a blessing to so many others. Uh, Christina says, I see a big, large silver shield covering you. You are under it. Pray, 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 praying. Sean says, I see a great leader emerging. I see mentoring or teaching others. Jesus, amen. Amen. It's a lot of work for you to do. Alima says leadership. John says be ready. <laughs> I love it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, oh, happy to have to leave this. Well, Kevin, we love you, my brother. Uh, and tell your daughter. Uh, birthday. Bless her. Huh? I thought someone said something. So yeah, so hey, Kevin, we love you, my brother. Tell your daughter we say happy birthday and may the Lord bless her. John, does any of this make sense, John? Uh, yes, it does. All, all I have to say is, wow, 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 wow. Um, <laughs> God bless each and every one of you guys. This has truly blessed me. Amen, amen. Amen, that was awesome. Awesome. Oh, by the way, for those of you guys who, who were here on Wednesday, Danny wanted, wanted me to tell you that uh, he, he couldn't believe how uh, accurate for a bunch of people who've never seen him before, Heard him before, know what he looks like, 
to be so doggone accurate. He wanted me to tell you thank you. He's been stewing in that all week long since Wednesday. Or not well, all week. For the, since Wednesday, he's been just stewing in it going like, wow. And you didn't tell me anything. I said, no, brother, you're not on top of nothing. I love it. So you guys, that was amazing what you did. Yeah. Love you more, Kevin. Okay, for well, now, now, White Gladwick. Father, would you show us a picture, an impression, a vision, uh, a word, a scripture, Father, a sensation for White Gladwick, Lord. Would you bless her, Father, or bless this person, Father, in Jesus' name. Okay, I'm going to take a step of faith. I'm kind of nervous. Um, Andre, it was funny that you said white Gladwick and then you assumed it was a girl. Um, yeah. It could be a guy, but yeah. I actually saw a vision of a prom dress. So if you're a guy, I, I apologize, but this is what I saw. Um, I saw a prom dress with um, diamonds and sparkles, and I kept hearing the Lord say, you radiate, you radiate you radiate and he is just so in love with you and i feel like you're going to the prom and he has you on his arm and he's showing you off and you're his daughter and he loves you so much and you're if you're a guy like i said i apologize but that's what i saw so i'm hoping you're a girl <laughs> yes you, you, you get no grace that's the lord <laughs> I know what if it's a guy Andre's gonna rebuke me so bad. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be brutal. It's gonna get ugly up in here. I'm gonna All give right. you a look. Mm -hmm. Okay, white gout Gladwick, please break it to me gently. Give me a confirmation. Type it in the box. Not yet, not yet. Let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, Sean says someone have back pain. Is that for white Gladwick, uh, Sean? Uh gray. Jeep third says, I saw someone walking into a nursery. Uh, Kimberly says, first thing came to mind is purity. Wow. For me, it was clear skies. I see a huge display case that was oversized. Ask the Lord, Sean. Now, now that you've kind of got you know an indication, now begin to focus it and fine tune it. Now, ask the Lord. This is the place where the intimacy has been being built up. Lord, who has back pain? Who who is this person? But we're we're praying for White Gladwick. So if you didn't feel that before, until we said White Gladwick, then if you feel us that person, then say, uh, then you can ask, are you are you experiencing any back pain, um, or turn it into a prayer. Uh, Blue Cherokee Valley says, I heard a scripture. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Monique says, I see clear skies at a beach front, but the waters are white and pure. Greenbelt says, I heard that your past is no determination of where God is taking you and that, like Joseph, your family will rise and call you blessed. And Elisa says, I, you joyful? Am I saying it wrong? I, you joyful? No, I see you joyful. Oh, I see you joyful. Okay, sorry, I didn't see the second part. Thank you. I see you joyful. I like that. I seen the word billing problem. Okay, um, great Jeep, maybe 
pray that through or ask them into a prayer. For clarification. Yeah. Yeah, we'd like to edify, exhort, and comfort right now. Uh, you have a pure heart, giving heart. You have so much love for people, but sometimes feel you don't get it back. But the Lord said, I will reward you openly, and you will start to see this manifest in the season. The Lord said to be patient and trust in me from Kimberly Belton. Uh, Christine says, you are a rare jewel to God. Why Gladwig, is this making any sense? Very much indeed, amen. In tears, oh. I heard shield and buckler. Wow. So what was that? Family problem. So uh great Jeep third. Uh could you pray over White Gladwick and turn that prayer, turn that what you sing into a prayer? Uh Gray 182 says, I'm seeing huge wings on a butterfly. Uh Kimberly also says, he also said, All you have done is not in vain, trusting me. Amen. I'm sorry, go ahead, uh Gray Jeep. Um, okay. Um your father which in heaven, Lord. Um, I pray over Black uh Gladwick. So Father, I pray over Glad. Lord, you see all Arashataka Masiatiki. Lord, you know all things, so Father, you see all things, hallelujah. So Father, but I heard the word billing power. I'm even hearing the word address change. Um well, Father, I ask that you um bring clarity, Haladamasiatiki, to this. Um, to this uh, word, hallelujah, that she wouldn't be left in confusion, Lord Father. I hear the word, I hear the Lord even saying, I see you now. You're like beauty before him. He desires to make you whole. You're beautiful, hallelujah. I even hear that you even are um it's like I'm I'm I keep you hidden. As if you're in his hidden place, hallelujah. I even see you. I do, I do. I kept because I kept seeing landscape and like fields um of just grass and uh uh, like uh, some sort of venue. He is the rose. He is the one that holds you. Hallelujah. And I do see you with like a prom dress. Lord, we thank you that you are her comforter. Hallelujah. And you carry her through. Hallelujah. There is gladness in your arms. Hallelujah. There is peace in your arm. Hallelujah. And that you will continue. Hallelujah. I see a lot of my sister to show her that joy is her portion. Hallelujah. I even see you now, even in your personal space. Hallelujah. He said, dwell with me. Even the more. And he's even breathing on you. Hallelujah. And I keep hearing him say, beautiful. You're beautiful. Jesus, in your name, be God. Lord, let this be clarity to her, and that she would have peace, hallelujah. And Lord, that she would stand even on your name, hallelujah. We don't say your name, we don't speak your name in vain, hallelujah. You're a God that produces, hallelujah. You're a God that come forth, hallelujah. It's like I'm even seeing a wedding cake, hallelujah. As if he wants to celebrate you, hallelujah. I hear him saying, bride, hallelujah. 
Jesus, in your name, we got her But I, I pray, Lord Father, that that word even give her clarity, it give her peace. Hallelujah. And that it would even confirm some things, Lord Father. So I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Monique. I thank you, Father, for her life, Lord God. I thank you that she surrendered unto you, Father. I thank you that her life is in translation, oh God, that you are transforming. All things have passed away. All old things and old man nature have passed away. And she is a new creature in you, my God. She is your bride, Lord God, a jewel upon your crown, my God. You are even changing her environment, oh God, from the inside out. This is what I see, the beauty transformation within her. So I thank you, Father, that you, God, you with your glorious hands and the glory of who you are, you are shrouding her and covering her in your glory, Father God. I thank you that you will bring her close into intimacy with you, that she will lack no good thing, Father God, that you will lack no good thing, that she will be fulfilled from the deepest recesses of your soul with him and him alone oh god i see him taking you away to the secret place showing you of himself like never before you are precious and although your past and other people have tried to keep you there reminding you oh he says let go of the old things let go of the old things for I am making a new way and you will perceive it and you will walk it out and you will walk above all that the people around you have said you cannot overcome you will be beautiful you will be renamed and the glory of the Lord will shine through you for you and around you I thank you Lord I thank you I thank you I thank you for this transformation I thank you for this season I thank you for the intimacy that she will know and all of the secrets that she will let in on her in the in these times these private times that will build her up I thank you Father I thank you for her fortification from the inside out in the mighty name of Jesus Erica Oh, okay. Yeah, Pamela, finish off in prayer. Okay. Um, sorry, I was ministering to somebody on the text right now. Um, who were oh, praying Mike, for? Mike Gl Glowick. Oh, okay. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for this precious sister and all the tremendous things that you are showing her and walking her through and bringing her up and out and into a better place god i thank you lord for calling her into a higher a higher purpose and i thank you father that um oh lord i thank you for all these tremendous words that have been coming to encourage her to exhort her and to comfort her and i thank you lord that as she realizes now that she is truly your daughter that she is truly truly called of you and that you love her so much that you are calling her out by name, that you are calling her out by description, that you are actually calling her out word after word has been a confirmation that she is precious to him, that she is a jewel to him, that she is um, being serenaded on his arm and being like presented, um, as one person said, like as a bride. So I thank you, Lord God, that she is coming out of the hidden place. She is coming up and into um, your arms and where you have called her to be, and that she is walking in her, into her own, into her royalty. And um, I thank you, Lord God, that she will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why, 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 did that make sense? Oh, okay. Sorry, we have work. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Blue Cherokee, did we did we pray for you? Yeah, you prayed for me, Papa. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the names again kind of freezing. Yeah. Oh, oh, 
Andre, there was one more person on the um uh where is it? Kimberly Belton, I don't think we prayed for oh. yet. Oh I could okay. be wrong. Kimberly, did we yeah. pray for you yet? No, uh, not yet. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, now I was gonna say I was gonna say the her code name, okay, so we, we know it's a girl, so whatever, that's just a given. So <laughs> praise God. So Father, would you show us, Lord, um a word, a scripture, a verse, Lord God, an impression of feeling for Kimberly, Lord God. Father, would you bless her, Lord? Bless her in this hour, Father. Thank you, Lord. I, I want to start this one off. I saw it looks like yeah, like God was pouring into you, but had a, he had all these holes. But then I see the Lord stopping up all those holes, stopping up all those holes. So all that he pours into you won't be just poured out, leaving you empty. But now when God begins to pour into you, you're not going to leak anymore. You're not going to pour out, uh, ooze out any longer. Uh, all that God pours into you is going to stay and remain, stay and remain. And even to where one aspect of it is this, the stuff that was coming into you was pollu polluted because there was a mixture. But God is clearing out all the junk, playing away all the mixture. And now what's left now is a pure vessel. So when God pours into you this time, there'll be no mixture. It'll be a purity. And God is well pleased with the progress. Okay. Uh, also, uh, Alima would like to add, daughter, I see your tears. Cry no more. I hear God calling your name three times. He says, Kimberly, Kimberly, Kimberly. I see a golden key that will open a door that has been challenging to open for some time. Thank you, Lord. I got Jeremiah 33 and 6, where it says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Wow. I see you shining and excelling the things of God. Alima says, great things in store for you. Christina, Christina says, oh, go ahead, Andre. Uh, well, God, Christina says, God says he will up, uphold you with his right hand. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Blue Chair Case says, you are my vessel of choice, daughter. Okay, Andre, I'm going to take a step of faith here. Um, I see, I, I actually feel that somebody in the room has a word for Kimberly. And I don't know why it's like, I feel like the pit in your stomach, the sweaty hands, and you're really nervous, but I really feel an encouragement that you need to give that word. John says, I see you worshiping before God. And this time he is going to move on you powerfully. Bio says, I had to drop, okay, I dropped now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Viola. Bless you. Lord Jesus, I hear the song Covenant Keeping God. Wow. Thank you, Viola. Um, actually, Jesus, could you turn that into a prayer? Uh, you are on my vessel of choice, daughter. Um, and it's um, for Kimberly. It's for Kimberly. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Robanda Raba Sheke Broso Kota Rabanda Rabasi, Rebe Shekanda Robe Seke Bronso Kota Rabanda Rabasa, Lando Robe Shekanda Rabasin, the Rebe Sin de Rebasso Kurumanda, Bresin Kadarabason, Dohire Seremanda Rabasa, 
Roba shaka tebre sin karaban sururoman sa kimberly. The Lord says, You are my choice vessel. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for your beloved daughter. I thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that Lord God, you'll give her eyes to begin to see herself as you see her. I thank you, oh Heavenly Father, that Lord God, you see her as a royal, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. I thank you, oh God, that you are a precious jewel to you, are that she is a precious jewel to you, oh God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you'll begin to deal, oh Heavenly Father, even even within her heart, Lord God, the things that she's had to face in her life, almighty God, that Father God, you'll begin to uproot, oh Heavenly Father, everything that is unlike you. I thank you, oh God, that you are creating her, oh God, a heart of purity. I thank you, oh Father God, even right now, oh God, for Kimberly, Lord God, the things that she's had to face, oh God, the walls that she's placed up, oh Heavenly Father, that right now, oh God, you are beginning to penetrate, Lord God, through those places. I thank you, oh God, you're bringing renewing, oh God, that you see her, oh God, as a, as a person, oh God, who has already has your heart, but Lord God, the things that have come up against her, oh, oh Father, Lord God, they've caused her to become shielded. But I thank you right now, oh God, you're tearing down those walls. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that Lord God, the love that she de that she desires, Lord God, to show people, oh God, that she'll be able to show it in, in such a way, oh God, where she's no longer guarded. But I thank you, Heavenly Father, that Lord God, as you send her forth to love your people, Almighty God, that Father God, she will do it, oh Heavenly Father, trusting that Lord God, you will protect her. I thank you, oh God, that your healing balm will begin to massage the wounds of the I thank you, Heavenly Father, that Lord God, you're giving her clarity right now and sight to see what you already see all right in the name of Jesus. That Lord God, you see her beautiful. Lord God, you see her whole. You see her restored. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the work that you're doing in and, and in her life, oh God. That Heavenly Father, you will use her mightily. That Lord God, even from the beginning of time, before you placed her in our mother's womb, Lord God, she was chosen by you. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that the, the when, when, when the things came around her, Lord God, to change her nature, Lord God, you kept her in the secret place. You kept her, oh God. I thank you that you protected her and guided her. And even in this time and in this hour, Lord God, that Heavenly Father, that Lord God, you're using her as your choice vessel to, to demonstrate, Lord God. I see you putting her up on a pedestal, Lord God, for many to see. Lord God, so, so many people uh, push your daughter to the side, but Lord God, you're putting her in a place, oh God, that she can be seen by many. I thank you, oh God, that Heavenly Father, she will be a light set on top of a hill that cannot be hidden. Lord God, let your light within her, oh God, begin to shine so brightly, oh God, that men may see and glorify you, oh God. I thank you right now, oh God, for the turnaround. I thank you, oh God, for the transformation. I thank you for the renewing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, the pain. We thank you, oh God. Oh, so that your daughter will feel a joy unspeakable, oh God. Fill her, God, as just as you see her as a choice vessel, Lord God, begin to pour joy, 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 unspeakable in her life, oh God. That joy will begin to be joy to other people. Lord God, those who are depressed, those who are weary, Lord God, as your daughter works, walks in, and Lord God, the joy that will be rest upon her, oh God, that you will cause her face to shine. Lord God, just a, just one encounter with your daughter, Lord God, people, oh, Rebe Shende Basa, they will feel your joy. Oh God, we thank you right now for her life. Lord God, that you're lifting her up right now from the place that she's in right now, almighty God. We thank you for the joy. We thank you for the increase. We thank you for the breakthrough, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, Father. I thank you and I praise you, God. Lord, you are awesome and you are Kimberly's God, Eva Boshata. Father, and as you are intimate with her, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that you are allowing us this time to lift her up before you, God, Eva Boshata. Father, you know her every need. You know the very breath that she has desires, Lord God, that she's not even able to give words to, Eba but she doesn't have to, God, because you read her heart, Eba Boshata, and your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards her. This day is great. Ah, Shaba. Baba. God, I thank you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. As you break it up, God, whatever it is. Ah, Ah, God, I thank you. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. Woo, Shama. Power belongs to you, Lord. And you show yourself powerful in her life. Yes, yes, yes. 
this day. Ah, this moment, God. It is not by chance, God. That you brought on this line today, Lord God. Because what you're doing, Lord God, is going to be done and complete. Done and complete. Over with. Now, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that she will contain the blessings now. That they won't flow out of her, Lord God, like before, but that she will have them, Lord God, to be able to move forward in her life in Jesus' name. Amen. Green belt. God, I pray that out of her belly, God, will flow rivers mm. of living water. God, everything that was dead, everything that has been put down or cast down, God, we pray that in this season, God, that you are reviving her, that you're restoring her. God, that you are bringing her something new, God, that you're refreshing her. God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you're doing a great transformation, God. You're giving her beauty, God, for her ashes, God, and joy for her pain. God, I pray that in this season, oh God, that she begins to believe and trust and you again, God, we just declare the word over her, God, that you've never left her nor forsaken her. God, we come against all church hurt. We come against all ministerial hurts, God. Anything that has caused her to become bitter, God, we declare, God, that her water will no longer be still, God, that you begin to move in her, God, like a mighty rushing wind, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that your rivers will begin to flow, God, from the crown of her head, God, to the sole of her feet. God, revive every part of her, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak now to her belly and we declare God giftings come forth, prayer come forth, everything that you've uh, declared and you've manifested on the inside of her come forth in the name of Jesus. We come against all contamination, everything that's tried to come and spoil, everything that's tried to uh, bring residue, everything that's tried to bring disease and contamination. But God, even like the potter God, sometimes you use the brokenness, you use the ugly places, you use the things, oh God, that seem as if they are unusable, God, and you take them, oh God, and you will use them, God, for your glory. So God, in the name of Jesus, God, everything that she's experienced, God, up until this point, God, we declare that in this next season, it will be a part of her testimony because we overcome, God, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony in the name of Jesus. So everything, oh God, that has caused her to stop and to stand still and to, and to retreat. We come against every spirit of fear, God, in the name of Jesus. We declare, God, that your word says you haven't given us a spirit of fear, God, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Everything that's attacked her mind in the name of Jesus that's made her think that she's beyond her time or her season is past, God. Everything that speaks to her, God, even in the night, God, we declare, God, now that you're bringing clarity, oh God, that like a, you're blowing a trumpet, God. I just hear a trumpet like in Zion. And the declaration is victory and the declaration is freedom and the declaration is liberation. God, that you're breaking her free, God, now from every attack of the enemy. We declare, God, that who the sun sets free is free indeed. And we declare freedom over her life. We declare breakthrough over her life, God, that she's going to move into this season. God, of freedom and liberation. And she's going to be able to go and compel others to come in the name of Jesus. God, even now those that have scorned her and mocked her, oh God, that you... You said you'll use the foolish things of this world to confine the wise. God, I even see, God, that in this season, people will have to take back their words. People have to take back the things that they've said with regard to her, oh God. But in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you are building her up, God, like never before. So we thank you, God, now for her freedom. We thank you, God, now for her victory. We thank you, oh God, now for the pouring, oh God, that's coming. Even as you're lifting up your hands, we just declare, God, that you are pouring into her, God, new waters and new waves and a refreshing and a refreshing um spirit oh god that you are bringing into her life god now in the name of jesus and we thank you god we give you glory we praise you and we honor you oh god for the testimony oh god that will come as a as it relates to her life in this season of her life and we pray these things in your son jesus name amen amen there are some more things like uh where shauna said I also see the colors of the rainbow falling on you as you worship. Um, uh, Greenbelt says, I saw you standing by a body of water. I'm thinking it was a stream because it was still, and there were trees and a small portion of green land surrounding it, but you were hesitant to cross. 
I also felt a bubbling in my belly as in relation to the gifts that God is throwing again in you. John says, I was looking at your last name and the belt of truth came to mind. This is the belt is used to hold up trousers. God will hold you up and uphold a spiritual covering and that strong foundation he is building in you. Uh, John also, they also smelled a sweet perfume during the prayers. Christine says, I hear the song, Oh, How He Loves Us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So, could you tell how even why, you know, I, I pulled on you guys, but even with the one word or the one phrase that you're getting or the one sensation or the first thing you're seeing, but then the minute you step out and you turn it into a prayer, more starts to come. More happens because you know what you're doing? You're making a demand upon the anointing upon your life. You are actually pulling and pulling on it. So the more you, even just even with that one word, by speaking it out, more starts to come. So now that the dam is broke, the water starts to trickle in. And it even comes powerfully. You, most of you guys, you just had, when I said pray, you know, you, there was nothing prepared. You had nothing. But all of a sudden, scram, it just started pouring out. That's how you release the song, Lord. That's how you were changed into another person. You were changed because you displayed compassion. You released that compassion, and that compassion is shared with others. Um, this is why most people go, wow, you know, you, you feel it because you know why? Compassion is angelic being. Compassion is what really releases the presence of God to, like I said, Eldad and Midad. They actually help, caress, love. And it, when it begins to minister, you are touching the very heart of that person. <laughs> Kimberly says, my, thank you, my goodness. Yeah, you just overwhelm people with that. And that's how you begin to flow. But did you notice how we all hooked up? We hooked up. And by hooking up, we are now one mind, one accord. And if you can tell, all the prayers were all pretty much, uh, there's obviously, you know, variations and differences, but everything kind of still stayed on point, still stayed like on task, purity, wholeness, a clear sky, all those things all tying together because God is showing each and every one of us um, from our own personalities what he's trying to say. And it's all tied into the same thing for the very people we're ministering to. Uh, grade 182 says unexpected, the blessings, the pruning, the new fruit, the new, uh, newness of your entire being. It will all be unexpected. Amen. See, that all ties in together. Alima, you got your hand raised? Yes, sir. I have a yes. question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you're praying for someone and then you feel like crying, is that normal? Yes. You know why? You're praying the very heart of God. And every time I'll bust out crying as I'm praying for somebody because I know that's God's heart. God's heart is now flowing through me, and the reactions I'm getting are God's reactions for that person. It's the way that the Holy Spirit says, if you don't know what to say, I will give you the words to say at the time. So let's talk about this now, not as a, a rebuke or, or a chastisement, whatever, but um, going forward, I want you to stop mid-sentence to pray in tongues. And I understand why we do that. It's because... You know, sometimes we get like like tongue tied or uh, 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 and what what's happening is this. Did you ever go to go swimming and you, you wrap up and you get ready to jump off the diving board and you go, okay, all right, okay, ready? One, two, three. Wait, 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 wait. Are we going on three or we're going on three and then jump? And so you go, da, da, da. and so we don't know how to release that. So we're gonna work on not speaking in tongues as much when we give the word because the person is hearing, they're hearing two or three words. It's like this. I'm going to and then you will but then apart, and in the end, in Jesus' name, amen. So they're getting half of it while you are trying to get the download from the Holy Spirit. Be in that place to know, let it come out of your mouth. So if you go, follow the name of Jesus, I just want to tell you that you get that. No, 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 you don't have to do that. You don't have to rev up the engine. Allow it to flow, and that's where it comes by faith. And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you guys are wrong in your word. I'm just saying going forward, we're going to work on not speaking in tongues as much. I was notorious for that. I was notorious because I kept stopping to try to like make sure, you know, and then all, all that was to say, um, uh, yeah, like Alima said, sometimes you don't know, don't know what to say. That's when you take that step of faith and just open your mouth and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. So what's happening is when you begin, when we begin to stop and then we go like we're checking back in with the Holy Spirit, tongues are for you. They edify you only. So if you're talking to a person, it's like this. Why did the chicken cross the road? Oh, you know, 
And in Jesus' name, amen. Like, you're like, what? So I you only heard half of my, what I'm talking about. Even though I've been talking, you only got a small portion. So think about that. When you're ministering to people, try not to, you know, speak in tongues as much, but take that bold step of faith to just release it. And you're going to find out, you're going to start saying stuff you were planning on saying. So get out of your get out of your own head and get into that place. And like I said, sometimes you got to do that to get the pump primed up because it builds up your spirit, man. But when you're speaking in tongues, the only person being edified is you, and not the person you are ministering to. God help me if I'm sitting there on an operating table and I see the doctor do this number. Okay, he's bleeding. So let me just see right there from the. Wait, wait, wait. Oh no, no, no. Sorry. Got it. Okay, let's do this. No, no, no. Don't, don't come near me. Don't. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't, don't come near me. Be in that place to where I want to go. Speak it out by faith, and I was gonna pray. So when I put you on the spot, and I did that purposely. Sorry, not sorry, but I put <laughs> I put you in that place. So then you. Go, oh, okay. What do I say? The Bible says, when you don't know what to say, I will give you the words to say. So guess what we're gonna do on Wednesday? We're gonna flow like we did a little bit more, but with no hesitation. Is that okay? All right. <laughs> so that was good, y'all. Amen. I hope, amen. I hope you guys, uh, you know, uh, got more comfortable, uh, felt more like, okay, I'm hearing from God. I'm hearing from God. That was really beautiful, guys. I mean, like I said, I'm like, there's no scripture without perfect interpretation. So I'm getting just as blessed as you guys. Some of those words, I'm like, I, I receive that. Thank you, Jesus. Because if you hear it and it ministers to you, take it for yourself as well. Receive that for yourself as well. And if you notice now, very few of you had the, are you, you know, are, are, uh, is it, you know, is your favorite color blue? I mean, it wasn't a whole lot of that, but it was more or less like, you know, you heard something. And so by focusing more, okay, Lord, what does this mean? And as you go deeper, he is, he can't wait to show you more, to reveal to you more. And then what's going to happen is you're going to start to get elaborate. I mean, detail like you haven't seen or never even contemplated before, but it's going to be amazing because what you're going to be seeing or releasing is the heart of the Father through El Dad and me Dad through compassion and through loving arms. Ah, that was good, y'all. So thank you guys for letting me have your Saturday, and I hope you guys are blessed. And and just you know, just so we're clear, um, this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. There's so much more. So we're going to go deeper and deeper. Because we really want you to, like I said, we're not trying to make you prophets. We want to help you build up that gift within you so you can go out there and prophesy and demonstrate the love of God to a lost and dying world. In Jesus' name. Amen. You guys were awesome today. Oh, awesome. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely awesome. I loved it. Thank you. And Pammy, thanks for the invite. This was great. Oh, and no, girl, no, I got your no, back. No, no one asked me if my word was correct. So, yes, it was. Pammy, you were, like, right on the head. Everybody's word was awesome. So, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, I, I, I applaud it. Sometimes I'll forget because I'm looking at all the names from my little, from my screen. So, I'm looking at, you should have seen on on uh, on Wednesday. She told yeah. me, Prophet Hart. She told me you were trying to search the room. <laughs> oh, I mean, we had so many grays. I'm like, this is gray paint. Great, great street. So I, you know, things get a little bit like hey, gray eighty two, great G. So I, I got a little blurry with all the things. No, so. it's okay. But I just want to make everybody know that there was, and the words were right on point, right, straight on point. Yeah. So thank you. Awesome. awesome. That's yeah. so awesome, man. I was like so nervous about the whole white. Uh, what was her last name? Uh, Gladstick or something? Yes, and and the, it was a girl, right? It was a woman, right? Man, I'm hoping. I'm still yeah. hoping. <laughs> I'm like, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> no, we're but not going to hope. We're going to know. But Pammy, hold I on. Know. You couldn't have, you, no, I don't think you were wrong because everybody who prayed said she, her, her, her. So no, I don't think you yeah. were wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. but like I said, sometimes it's also throwing off when you see something like pink uh, first street. So obviously you think, okay, it's probably girl because you're wearing pink. No, don't do that. And, and white, I think we had white Lincoln last time. You, you couldn't tell what that person was. So let alone blue or gray, blue or gray, you know, you, it may me lean towards a male, but you're not for sure. So don't, don't go into the place of assumption because assumption will lead right into familiar spirits. Go into that place of not even understanding, um, white light, white Lincoln or gray, gray 182. You have no idea. 
You have no idea. Or black. Or black. Or whatever. Black. Or black. Yeah, yeah. Black so you have no idea. Yeah. But yeah. this was good too, Papa Hearn, because I not being able to see the name, like, yeah. <laughs> like you just seeing some, like what you have up your grade one eighty two. It yeah, was yeah. interesting to me, and I thought it was a stretch, but it was so funny because when you start, even when I forgot whose word that was, when you started and you said something, and the first thing I heard was vessel, pure vessel, my chosen vessel. Oh, uh, Kimberly, you started praying. And I was like, oh, my God, look. So just not having the name boy, girl, that was a stretch, but I think this is a good exercise. I'm definitely going to try it as much as I can. This was awesome. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Oh. That's exactly why we do so because without having – so if we get – people get like – um. You know, they'll get the color of the person, the race of the person, the gender, or the age, or, or just the wherewithal. So that already sets up a, an image, a picture of where you're going to go. But not having that, you you have to rely wholly and completely on the Holy Spirit. Completely on the Holy Spirit. And that's where, that's why these exercises are done. So you go, okay, uh, grade G third, I have no idea what that person looks like, where they're from, what they believe in, or what, you know, they're vegan. I, I have no idea. So I'm going to say, okay, Lord, show me, Lord, about this person. And it's, it's so interesting as stuff begins to happen. You'll find out that other people are kind of like, you know, connecting with you in that same vision. But as you can tell, as all the words have been brought forth, they edify, exhort, and comfort. And that's when you know God is in it. God is in it. That and for, as far as that word about the prom dress, whether it was a male or female, to me, it just indicated the bride of Christ. Ah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jimmy, were you there Wednesday? I was. Did, did you get, how was your words? Uh, the one that you gave me was about the hammer with the, um. Oh, okay. That was you? That was me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, was... I still don't know who some of you are. I, I don't know. So, I mean, other than like, I think one or two people who kind of texted me and said, oh my God, you're right on. Like, oh, that was you? So that, that's the beauty of it all. We, we don't know. Uh, but to the Holy Spirit, you do, and that's precious. I, that's precious. I, I was great, great, um, great Dowood. Oh, that was you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. It was, uh, it was White Lincoln. Oh, you were White Lincoln. I was White Lincoln. I was Black Lincoln today. I was White Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Just switching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, green and white flag. Okay, see? All right, that's that's awesome. I love it. I love it, y'all. Oh, yeah. oh Hackerman. Yeah. So, Martine, did you, uh, was it today? Was it uh, confirming? Yes, today was amazing. I'm so happy that I joined. Um, this, I love the exercises and everything, so this is great. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, got more to come, so... You know, I, I was nice to you today, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Who is Blue oh. Hackerman? Uh, who is Blue Hackerman? Me. Oh, <laughs> Blue <laughs> Cherokee Valley, okay. <laughs> Kim, I was Blue Hackerman. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, so you got two words? You double dipped? No, oh, from Wednesday. <laughs> Wait, who is Blue Hackerman? Double dippers. Double dippers, all. Well, that was almost me. I was great army camouflage today. I'm great 182. But this is why I said skip over today. <laughs> okay. That's Thank why. you. Thank you. Oh uh, well, I was um. I'm sure y'all figured it out. <laughs> gray Jeep. Gray Jeep third. This bitch was. I don't know. Oh okay. I didn't know. <laughs> Praise God. See that that see what. Well, yeah. What you your, your the color of your shirt is gray Jeep? I had I got on a gray shirt and I do drive a Jeep and my neighborhood that I grew up in was Third Avenue. Oh, okay. So, so I just kind of mixed some stuff in there because it seemed like people mixed it up. They didn't put the street name, so it looked like I seen cars, cars. So I was like, okay, well, let me just make it work. No, my <laughs> my street name is Cherokee Valley. It was literally Cherokee Valley. So oh. that's the yeah, okay. that's why it says that. Is I have a blue T-shirt on today, and the street I couldn't figure out what I what street I grew up when I was a kid. But the only one that came to mind was when I moved to Georgia, and it was Cherokee Valley. So oh, yeah, that's why it's a Cherokee. Shoot. Okay, okay. <laughs> Beatrice Amazing. like Jeep. <laughs> yeah, Harmony says who who was Blue Hackerman again? Who was that? Oh, Kimberly. 
Kimberly was, but she oh. didn't know the rule about double dipping. She didn't know. Okay. All right. So, yeah, she got a double dip. Hey, man, but you like, know what? In all fairness, though, she didn't. Um, it was. I guess you could say it was my fault because I said we didn't pray for Kimberly Belton yet. But that was because she was in code name the other day, and I didn't recognize that she was already on. So I guess you could say that was my. But she didn't purposely try to double dip. So hey, I was forgiven. I think. What? I think Monique had asked for prayer. Yes. Yes. Monique, yes. where are you? Is she still here? Okay. Yes. yes. I was just listening in and all you guys. Um, so like Wednesday night we did the the class and then Thursday morning I got up and it's getting my children ready for school. And out of nowhere I had a severe asthma attack and I was rushed to the hospital and by ambulance. And um, the hospital's not that far from my house. It's about five minutes driving. And like three out of the five minutes, I was unconscious. Wow. Um, wow. And they had because of the, or the doctor, the oral surgery stuff. I don't, I don't see a, a correlation. I was perfectly fine. Like I've had asthma on and off again all my life, but I've never experienced anything like this in my entire life. And, um, it literally like the breath was just taken out of my lungs. That's the only way I could describe it. And, um. Like I, I, like I wasn't, I felt like I, huh, the experience I had was crazy. Like I felt like literally like I left my body and I was going this blinding white light, but I can see the EMS the whole time I'm, the whole time I'm in that state. I'm just like, I praise you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Like I was elated. Meanwhile. This poor man is shooting me up with epinephrine, just trying to get me to come back. And the next time, next time I was conscious, I was surrounded by like a whole team of nurses, doctors, etc. And uh, they had oxygen pumping into me. Um, just all kinds of things was happening really fast. So I'm like currently still in the hospital, but they ran every oh kind. Of, they ran every kind of test: X-rays, blood tests, COVID nineteen. Everything is normal. There's like no explanation. And so um, I was asking for prayer because I don't feel like maybe the enemy might have wanted to like put some fear and intimidation because that's been like happening in a few past weeks. Um, but I had a, a conversation with the Lord and um, and I, I think I even commented on one of, of your post prophet pardon about a girl that had no ears and then uh pastor prayed over her and she like grew ears about creative miracles and the lord has been talking to me since last year about creative miracles and like i posed the question i always ask questions i don't know and i was just like why don't we see those kind of miracles as often as we should be like you're the same yesterday today and forevermore and i'd like to bear witness and and see that happen again and I remember and like about a week, about a month ago, he was like, do you want to see me, see it happen? I was like, yeah, I want to bear witness. That's, that's dope. I want to see that happen again and bear witness and testify. Like I saw an eye grow where there was no eye. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And he said, do you want to see me do it through you? And I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That's cool. You know, I never say no to him, but I forget. Like when you say yes to things, you have it by faith, but you also go through the process. So I just don't know if like, like he's putting me through a process because yeah. it's been a whole year that he's just, he started talking to me about creative miracles. I didn't even really know what that was. I had to ask my, uh, my pastor, like, is that healing miracles or and he, he made a dis the difference, the differentiation of like when Jesus turned water into wine, that's a creative miracle, as opposed to uh, giving blind Bartimaeus back his sight, that's a healing miracle. So I was like, oh, okay. So kind of like reading up on it and like really, really, really reading the word about it and, and kind of just like inquiring of the Lord, dabbling, I guess you would say, right? And the past three months has been 
one health challenge after another and I keep finding myself in different hospitals, in different settings, being able to pray for people. Uh, my bedmate here in the hospital, she is a fairly young woman and she's bedridden and she was, she has MS and she was here because she uh, had very bad pneumonia and just kind of like she was in and out, like sleeping off and on and stuff. I just kind of prayed over her and she was able to go home today. And, oh, wow. uh, and I'm, I'm not able to go home, I'm still here <laughs> till tomorrow. Hopefully they will release me. Um, but it, it was just the craziest day. I've never experienced anything. And I tell you anything like this, anything near this ever. And I've had pneumonia and I've had a partially collapsed lung, but I have never experienced this. Like literally had to send my autistic 11 year old downstairs to my mother and have her, have him get her and tell her it's an emergency. And my mom had to dial 911. So an ambulance can come to the house and just take me off to the hospital because I could not breathe. And they can't find any 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 no explanations, wow. none whatsoever. Wow. So situations like that is when, like I said, what you overcome, you have authority over. So when God begins to do something of that nature, where you literally, you know, to where they're you know trying to keep you alive, and you actually come through that. You have overcome death, which means you have the power of life. So every every person you're going to pray for will be healed. You have now oh, authority. It's almost to say so that, like, crazy. you know, what's the expression? You got to crack some eggs, mix some omelets. So yeah, you've you've had you've uh, you've come through this uh, ordeal or situation, um, and now you've got the victory over it. You got the victory. Um, Pamela was saying, getting uh, the spirit of fear, or just um, uh, not just you, but the, the bloodline with phobia. So we're going to break that tonight, this afternoon. Yeah, Prophet Harden, I heard fear and anxiety. Uh, yes, is that the question we yes. asked too. Yes, because I, I, I used to, I had asthma really bad as a child. This is Jisa, as a, really bad as a kid, and I remember as she was talking, it's like the Holy Spirit was saying fear and anxiety. It used to cripple me. I was coded twice. I almost died. I used to spend a numerous amount of time in the hospital. And so sometimes, especially when she said that thing where she don't know where it came from, I heard fear and anxiety. That's why I want to um, I want to bear witness to that, Jajisa, because you know what? You know how Andre is always saying what you've overcome, you have authority over. I also had a uh, childhood uh, asthma and I also almost uh, died twice. Um, I coded twice. So I think Jajisa and I should be the ones to pray for her as well as you, right. Andre. But um, right. we've overcome asthma. We have authority over it. So Jajisa, let's break this over her life. Amen. Amen. Do you want to go first? I'll follow you, Pammy. Okay. So, Father, I thank you right now for my sister Monique, God. I thank you right now that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. I thank you, Lord God, that as Andre was explaining today about being on the cross, Jesus, you were on the cross for us. You released the spirit of the prophet. You released teacher and pastor and everything else. But, Lord God, you also released healing. By your stripes, we are healed, and we thank you for your promises. We thank you that we stand upon your word that she, our sister, is healed in Jesus' name. We take authority over this root cause of spirit of the spirit of fear and of phobia, and we rebuke and bind the um, generational curses that have plagued her family and have just tried to haunt her. Father, we break it right now. We smash, dissolve, and destroy these chains that try to bind her. She is set free, and we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Um, I just, I keep seeing, um, like, a life preserver being thrown at you, but instead of, every time you go to try to grab it, Monique, that um, the enemy is wanting to put, like, a belt around your neck. And trying to strang like literally strangle the life out of you. So, Father, we ask you that you we that you just cut off that belt, that you destroy that belt, that anything that is trying to suffocate your daughter, Lord, that you would just um 
dissolve it and we thank you lord for setting her free this day we thank you lord god that she is healed this day in jesus name heavenly father in the name of jesus lord god we thank you for your beloved daughter lord god we we lift her up before you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that no weapon um, formed against her shall prosper and every voice that raises an accusation um, against her shall be found a lie. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Right now, we command the spirit of fear and um, anxiety. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We command it to bow to the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father. I heard life-giving spirit. I thank you in the name of Jesus that, Lord God, who rabansi, oh, that your daughter is a life-giving spirit. Heavenly Father, that Lord God, we, we rebuke the hand of the enemy against her life right now. Lord God, just as you um have done, oh God, in Pammy and I's life, oh Heavenly Father, that Lord God, you delivered, oh Heavenly Father, us from the spirit of fear and anxiety. Lord, right, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that this spirit is being broken off of your daughter and today, oh Heavenly Father, we draw in the, a line in the, uh, in the sand in the name of Jesus and we say no more. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that Lord God, your daughter will begin to speak forth your word. We thank Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord God, that you begin to prophesy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that Lord God, she will go out into the nations and proclaim your word. We thank you today in the name of Jesus that the hand of the enemy has got to, it stops today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we speak healing over her body right now. We pray, Lord God, that you begin to change each DNA sequence right now in the name of Jesus. Ah. We thank you, oh God, that her DNA sequence, oh God, matches the rhythm, oh God, of yes. Almighty Yahweh. We thank you, Almighty God, that her DNA sequence matches, oh God, the DNA of Almighty Yeshua. Lord God, as he bore yes. oh God, every sin and inequity, oh God, on the cross, we take authority in the name of Jesus and we come yes. to you to loose your grips, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you today that you have proclaimed, oh God, your daughter is a life-giving spirit, just as Almighty Yeshua is. Oh God, we thank you that even right now, oh God, the healing angels will enter her room right now. Lord God, begin to do, oh God, what only you yes. can do. We pray that the Spirit of God will be begin to transcend upon her like a dove in the name of Jesus. Touch her lungs right now, oh God, that Heavenly Father, she can breathe deeply, oh God, at full capacity. Lord God, touch her endocrine system. Touch her lymphatic system. Lord God, touch her from the crown of her head, oh God, to the soles of her feet. Lord God, wash and renew her in your blood. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. I hear the right triumph. Oh God, that you will cause her to triumph. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, oh God, just as Prophet Harden said, the thing Oh God, that you overcome a ha. Oh, you have authority over. And today, in the name of Jesus, she will walk, oh God, down hospital corridors and heavenly father where people are dying. Lord God, because your spirit, your life-giving spirit is in your daughter, oh God. He will be resurrected in the name of Jesus. Lord God, the bed they lie on, your healing power will begin to walk down the aisle. Oh God, we thank you for your daughter's yes. life. Heavenly Father, do something. Oh, a miracle that only you can do. Oh God, I see it all sides so clearly. I see it so clearly. Yes, you yes, walk down aisles. You walk down hospital beds. You walk down hospital roads. Oh, they be shay. And as you walk through and proclaim the word of the Lord, I thank you that your words will be a life-giving spirit. But sometimes you won't even speak. You won't even say a word. You enter into rooms and people will people who've been given death sentences. They will stand up. Oh God, they be shay. Oh God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank yes, you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Father, what? I thank you, Lord God. Your word says, Lord, perfect in love, cast out fear. Perfect in love, Lord. Father, we ask and pray that your perfect in love will begin to now consume her, cover her even over, Lord, her house, even, even the hospital bed, Lord God. Let your perfect in love drive out, cast out, bind, rebuke, destroy the works of fear and of phobia. I come against every form of witchcraft, every incantation, and every spell that was cast and spoken over her life, things that deal with intimidation, things that deal with fear. Now break, 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 in the mighty Maxwell's name of Jesus. Father, I ask right now, Father, upon even her the bloodline on her mother's side of the family, Lord God, would you begin to cleanse and purify, God, 
all those times, Lord God, the women were intimidated, the women were kept in fear, the women, Father, who just gave up and surrendered, Lord God, who did things and surrendered things because they didn't want to get hurt, they didn't want to see nothing, want nothing happen to the family. Lord, forgive this bloodline, and would you begin now to restore, restore and renew the strength, the fire of this bloodline, God. Would you now cause, even now, not, not the, the rebellion, but the regeneration of the strength of those who minister justice to be released upon my sister and future generations. Lord, I ask and I pray, God, would you now begin to cleanse and purify where the enemy had tried to come in to keep people in check, to hold them back and to keep them in, 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 in a place of a prison and bondage. We break that thing now. We break the assignment now. Father, we thank you, Lord God, the cords of the enemy are cut now. The cords of the wicked are cut now. The cords of the oppressed are cut now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you, Lord God. I just speak that our both lungs will begin to operate, huh? operate and function properly now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that the esophagus, Lord God, will begin to function properly now. There'll be no head rushes, uh, no more uh, 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 congestion, no more mucus, no, nothing more in the lungs, Lord God. But I thank you, Lord God, a cleansing and a clearing in the nasal passages and also in the bronchial tubes. Lord, ah, there it is. Loose her now. Loose her now. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God. We apply the blood of Jesus. To every part from the top of her head down to the very soles of her feet. Every vein, every ventricle, every blood cell, every organ is made whole even now in Jesus' name. This is going to be a testimony, one of great, great things. My sister, you're about to speak forth and to bring forth and cause the manifestation of. For this, as I've told you before, you have paid a price for, but now comes the reward the releasing and the anointing that God has put upon your life to speak those things of not as though they are in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus, I want to say that you are on point because um, those are things that God has shown me and given me vision for literally walking through the hospitals and people that were with without hope the machines are just going crazy because they they don't they're pulling out IVs and pulling off all kinds of machines and coming off ventilators and it's it's a little overwhelming because it's like me, <laughs> um, but he has shown me that he had even showed me visions where I go out to outreaches and pray for people who are so addicted and and as I lay hands on them the heroin comes right back out the holes that they came back into into oh, their arm. Jesus. And I was just like, just random people. And he's even shown me that you walk down the street and you look at people and people are just demonized. We'll start to scream and be set free, captives being set free. And I was just in this place where it's like, really me? You're going to use little old me to do that, all that big stuff. And um, when Pammy said that, like the enemy just keeps trying to choke me. It's been that way for oh, since the pandemic. I literally feel like trying to choke the word of the Lord out of me. And and uh, I'm just like fighting, fighting and fighting and fighting. And just like, no, I rebuke that. And, and every time that, you know, he whispers like, oh, you know, you're going to say that. You're going to speak that. They're not going to believe you. Who are you? You're not even ordained. And all kinds of fiery darts I have to like raise up my shield of faith because you know it, it just starts this intimidation it's like harassment almost in the spirit and I was just like I am so sick of you come on amen that's when you come to the end of yourself and heaven begins and and this experience I wasn't afraid like I mean I'm not that I'm not you know I don't want to leave my children motherless but I was not afraid. I literally was entering into the, I knew I was entering into his presence and I was full of joy and so happy and just like trusting him. And even though I knew like what was transpiring wasn't good, I just wasn't afraid. And 
one of the phobias was like because I have a special needs child is and he either his father's not involved in his life and I'm like Lord nothing can happen to me because then I need to know that my children will be okay especially him and um one of the fears is that it's just that he'll be left without anyone to care for him and um um and he's so special you know god spoke to me about him when he was in my womb he is just the most special little boy ever and so um so intelligent but just in a unique way and um i know that he will be good you know in life i know that he'll he's gonna go far I just don't want to not be able to guide him. So, like, those are one of one of the things that I often pray about. I'm like, Lord, just, you know, I don't want him to be without that guidance in his life. Even though I know that my mother and my sister are just, like, they adore him, they care for him, and they're in his everyday life, no matter what. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> thank you very much for praying. Thank you so much for the confirmation. Thank you for this entire, uh, this, this school of prophets is like exactly what I needed. Um, it was, it's just been so enlightening and, and, and just confirmation that I'm, I'm not crazy. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. That's the best part of it. You're not crazy. You're not crazy. Uh, Monique, can I say something, please? Um, sorry. Um, I re I okay. I can really, I can really connect with you because um, I can really like I I don't know how to say it, but I I just can connect with like I can I know. Oh my God, I <laughs> Lord. Um. Oh. You, know, you know what, Alima? Why don't you make it a prayer, sweetie? Why don't you pray for her? Oh, no, because I just want to give her a word of encouragement. I mean, okay. Yeah, because um, there was a time that I was really sick, too. And um, I really, you know, doctors, they really did not know what was wrong with me. And um, this goes on. Um, this pretty much went on for like some time. And and I was just praying to God. For me, I was really depressed. Um, I was just crying out to God, like, what did, what have I ever done? And um this was a time that I was just, I just give my life to Christ. And then uh, um, that year my mom passed away. And then all of a sudden I, I was on the verge of also dying because I was, I was diagnosed with, with, with um, something else, um, tumors, whatever. And um, I, and I was just fighting. I was just fighting. I was just fighting with prayer. I was just, I was just fighting with prayer and I was just crying out to God. And every time I would go to the, every time I would go to like the hospital, I would pray over every, every, I would pray over, I would pray over, I would, sorry. She, she's just correcting her son. So she, she's telling oh. him to be quiet. She'll be oh. right back. Okay. Sorry, but I will pray over every, every, every cast time that I will go to every like, like. <laughs> I'm telling you, the person that the person that used to take the the person that was in charge of the cast can I, I will be singing songs. I will be glorifying God. He will always tell me to be quiet, please, so that I can do my job. <laughs> but I would just <laughs> keep praying, just yeah. keep praying. And then and then the Lord delivered me out of that. And because of that, and because of that, now I know that even when I do fall sick, that nothing will not happen to me. Don't get me wrong. Things will come, but I know that when something happens to me, that nothing will not happen to me because I did overcome something. And now when I see people that are sick, there's this, there's this desire in me that make that, that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's this desire in me that I really want to heal people. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that, Alima. Yeah. Um, I've always had a desire to see people me a whole, um, just because I've experienced like a whole lot of brokenness from from young. And um 
it's just more than just physically healing. It's just being whole from the soul level on out. Um, but I never dreamt that God would use me for like, like on a soul level, I've always been able to just being a seer. You just, you see so, so deep and so far, but um, to go to a whole nother a level that I didn't even know existed <laughs> until recently when you started talking to me about it, it was like, wow, that's amazing. But not realizing he's talking to you about it because you're he's gonna do it through you, duh. <laughs> and I didn't didn't realize I was just like, oh wow. Um Amen. So yes, it, it's very um it's very comforting, it's very encouraging and um like I feel a whole load better right even now like i Amen. wasn't able to take a deep deep breath and now i am um the hoarseness in my throat because of so so many the inhalation treatments is like not even bothering me anymore so i mean i know i got that god had me in his hands the whole time i, I just the method was unprecedented you know i just you never imagine what god's gonna do and how he's gonna do it but um very very grateful for all of you so thank you so much amen. Amen. amen and we can't hear that we can't wait to hear the testimonies about that too amen amen wow awesome guys what a day if what i can brief, be brief i want to be brief okay monique are you on instagram uh yes yes i am Okay, I want I I highly encourage you to follow Daniel Adams. If you go on his page, he's a revivalist, and he has so many, you know, videos of just people getting healed. So many videos of deliverance and healing, and just prophetic ministry. He's an evangelist. He also has a YouTube channel called The Supernatural Life. Like so many powerful moves of God, you know happens through that man of God. So that, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you to stir your spirit. It, whatever you see on his channel shall be your portion in Jesus name. Wait, what is it? Dan Daniel what? Daniel Adams. He has a YouTube channel called The Supernatural Life. And he's also on Instagram. Is it Daniel Adams 43 or Daniel dot Adams. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right now. Give me okay. A second. Okay, so the actual his actual Instagram is S N L V A N. Oh wait. What is it? S N L V A N. He's got twenty four point three K followers. V A N? Yeah, Dan. S I think the SNL is for supernatural. S N L. Oh, D A N. I thought you said D A N. Yeah. Sorry, S N L D A N. Okay. Uh, yep, I found him. Got it. Oh, I found him. Okay. Praise God. Love it. Love it. A A Allen is another one, but I know Prophet Hardy knows. <laughs> I yeah. recently read his book. I recently read a book that he wrote called The Price of God's Miracle Working Power. Awesome book, amazing book. He also has some footage on YouTube of just his ministry in the 1950s. Amazing evangelist, you know, operating in the supernatural. Love it. Yep. Yep. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Brody. Thank you for that, guys. Wow. What a day. And so I love it because it goes by so fast. I'm like thinking like, oh my God, we were here it was almost three hours? Jesus. Well, I know I had to get up and take a bathroom break. So you must be like. <laughs> um, I'm going to go to the bathroom, <laughs> but yeah, that's fine. Uh, so guys, um, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept, upon precept we're going to grow and go, grow and go, grow and go and get deeper and deeper. Um, and therefore, we're going to start to see more signs, winners, and miracles. We're going to start to hear more testimonies. Amen. I just, I just have one question. Who's going to be the first millionaire? I am. 
Again, <laughs> Tammy was already off mute. That's not fair. <laughs> Man, you guys gotta be quick. You gotta be quick. <laughs> Thank you, John and Martin, for joining us. Uh, so, hope you can see you guys uh, Wednesday. And like I said, you know, I'm sorry, not sorry. Uh, but this is where, this is the playground. This is the place where you know you make the mistakes and you know you get the clothes dirty. So, you know, all that to say that the intimacy with the father is going to get and grow even stronger and stronger. All right. So Amen. Thank you guys. Let's Good you guys night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, everybody. Love Let's you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Shalom, billionaire. Shalom.